So Jamie, care to tell us where we are and what we're having for lunch? We are here in uh, District 5, District. Still, still in Cholon. Uh, so we're gonna eat lunch. Noodle, beef noodle is quite famous here in, Han in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's another attraction, I think, coming to this uh, part of Ho Chi Minh City, just to see neighborhoods like these. So again, I don't know if this was by accident or by design, but we're passing by one of the other, or one of the big attractions for visiting Cho Lung. This is the Chua On La, yeah. Quan Am Pagoda, which is, uh, wow, I knew a little bit of the history I forgot. It's dedicated to the goddess of mercy, I believe one of the oldest uh, temples in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And, uh, Hayden and Jamie were pointing out to me that for this offering, for this tiger, it's actually real uh, bacon, real pork that they put in the tiger's jaws. So all of this is real, like they're real eggs, real fruit. I was always joking that every time I ride on a grab, I think I must look really, really cool riding on my motorcycle in Saigon. But whenever I see the video, I look like a dork. I look really silly. <laughs> but maybe on your motorcycle, maybe I'm finally looking cool. What do you think? Yeah, it is. Lunchtime. And uh, Hayden is working his magic and he found us uh, like the ultimate expression of a local place to come have lunch. So there's uh, Jamie and Hayden. And I, I don't really know what they make here. Oh, yeah, pho. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, I wasn't paying any attention when we came in. But here's the, uh, the where the magic happens. So he makes uh, noodles here. Oh yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay. Guys, I'm so hungry right now. We're gonna eat pho. So Jamie, care to tell us where we are and what we're having for lunch? We are here in uh, District 5, still, still in Cholon. Uh, do, do you eat onion? Yeah, yeah. Do you eat onion? I eat onion. I eat onion. I eat onion. So we're going to eat lunch. Noodle, beef noodle is quite famous here in, Han in, in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a very typical lunch for you. Yeah. You have very. this all the time. Here. No, 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 no. Okay. And why this restaurant? Why did Hayden bring us here? Does he know this place from before? Not really. I mean, he bought us here because like uh, there's no we he cannot buy other uh, noodles beef noodles um, left here. Uh, so this is the only place. Actually, this is his first time oh, coming also here. His first time. Like really roaming around before just by bike. Uh, yeah. I see. Right. 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 And you're doing something special down here, I've noticed. What's going on with the chopsticks? So I just want to clean it with the lemon. With the lemon? Yeah. That's, is that a, a Jamie tradition or a Vietnamese <laughs> tradition? So it's cleaner. Yeah. The lemon has like a acid. acid. Yeah. yeah. Hanging out with these guys, you learn all the tricks. And to be honest, I don't think I have to uh, talk about this meal in depth. I've actually had beef noodle pho. 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 And, um, but I'll, I'll sample a little bit of it here on camera with the 
the fan blowing my BG's haircut all over the place. Dive into this. This is without any spicing. I haven't added anything yet. Very good. Very tender meat. Nice flavor. And uh, I noticed that Hayden was putting together special. So let's try it. Special sauce. He mixed together all kinds of things. So I guess that's what's going into my noodles. So normally we will put like lemon and uh, here. Oh. Right. Chili. Chili. Yeah. But he pre-mixed a whole bunch of stuff here. I don't know why he did that. <laughs> <laughs> He's a mad, mad scientist making his own. So lại trộn tất cả lại với nhau. And then we have the noodles. They, they're always rice noodles, right? But I don't think they're um, wheat noodles. Rice, rice noodles, right? Rice noodles. Yeah. So I've been keeping an eye on Jamie and Hayden, learning how to properly eat pho. And I already talked about how Hayden made the special sauce. And I've been watching him. And what he does is he takes the meat and mix and dips it into the sauce before he eats it. So that's what that's all about. So I'm going to do this and uh, give this a try. Actually, I already did this one time. <laughs> so my microphone was shut off, so there was no audio. So we're rip repeating the um, dipping the dipping the beef into the sauce. I never got some uh, beef from the uh, the pho. And there's my personal sauce made by Hayden, so it's got to be right. And just mix it all in there. And now you eat like the locals do. Yeah. Much much better. You get a lot more flavor, of course. Nice and spicy, real bite to it. So that's how you have your pho when you're in uh, Cholon. So lunch is done and uh, we're walking back to the coffee shop where we first met up because there are a couple of things on the other side of the coffee shop that I wanted to visit that I suggested. And anyway, <laughs> there are the boys up there walking ahead. I just stopped for a minute because I was looking down this street and that's one of the market buildings we went through. That was the one where we were told we couldn't shoot video. And uh, this whole neighborhood is all fabric markets. And I just really like this building here. That's what I wanted to get video of. I love these buildings with the residence apartments and all the uh, laundry on the outside. So yeah, you really do feel like you're in uh, Chinatown. Yeah. All the uh, fabrics here, all along this street. Just thought it was a very scenic looking street to be walking down. And the one place we're headed towards is a very old alleyway, like a century old alleyway with a series of interconnected houses supposed to be quite scenic. Um, and the architecture is supposed to be quite interesting. So people still live there and they have coffee shops in the alleyway, I believe but it's also turned into something of a tourist attraction because of its uh, history and uh, the architecture. Instagrammable, as they say. And there are two very famous pagodas on the other side as well, but we may or may not uh, drop by those. But uh, yeah, there's the boys, Hayden and Jamie. Very interesting street, this one. Views in all directions. There's a roundabout route here. And then the uh, cathedral where we were. It's just down there at the end as well. Perfect spot for it. whether by accident or design, I'm not sure, but now we're walking along another street I had on my list of attractions for going to uh, Cholun. 
So this is a street famous for herbal medicines and remedies, things like that. So uh, I think because it's Sunday, a lot of the shops are closed down. But apparently this street is uh, well known for uh, selling uh, Chinese medicine and herbs and things like that. Another amazing building. Look at that one. Three stories high. Balcony with all that greenery. Ban Mi shop right there on the corner. This area over here and that one as well mm -hmm. is apartment for the Chinese people. Wow. They are all in Chinese. Like me. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Another building over there. That's a hotel. Chụp chụp ảnh Hồng Kông ở đây ok chuẩn phết nhở? I forget the name of this street, wow. but I couldn't pronounce it properly anyway, so it doesn't matter. But this is a, a well known street if you just do a Google search for attractions of Cholun. This will probably be mentioned as a place to come to visit. Another beautiful building right there. Ooh. Look at that. It's another attraction, I think, coming to this uh, part of Ho Chi Minh City, just to see neighborhoods like these. And uh, oh, the boys went down here to check out some local architecture. Another alleyway. Makes me think of Pigsty Alley from uh, Kung Fu Hustle. Do you know the movie Kung Fu Hustle? Oh. Chi Chinese film, Kung Fu Hustle? I know that movie. I know that movie by Chou, uh, Chou Ting Chi. Chou Ting Chi. No, oh, that's a, diff a different name? I forgot his Chinese name. Ah, okay. But I know that movie. I was just saying this reminds me, like a neighborhood like this is a bit like that, um, I think it's called Pigsty Alley in the movie, where everybody lived. The, the, oh, where everybody lived, and the, then the mean landlady and her husband. And the husband, and they have of, a superpower, right? Yeah, yeah. Everybody there has some kind of a martial arts superpower. But if uh, yes, it's just all this whole Chinatown yeah. atmosphere reminds me of that. Yeah, so this is one of the streets I wanted to track down when I was thinking about coming here. So, I love all these balconies. Yeah, this is the old balcony. Yeah, uh, was built by the Chinese. So again, I don't know if this was by accident or by design, but we're passing by one of the other, or one of the big attractions for visiting Cholan. This is the Chua On Lan, yeah, Quan Am Pagoda, which is, uh, wow, I knew a little bit of the history I've forgotten, is dedicated to the goddess of mercy, I believe. It's one of the oldest uh, temples in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Beautiful pond on the other side. As I said, water is always a, an element of one of these temples. Uh, just so we get the, uh, the full name. This is it here. Quan On Lang. Yeah, names are a particular struggle in this part of the world. I think in the English speaking world, I think we're accustomed to most buildings and places having one name, but then in a cosmopolitan, multicultural society, like here in Ho Chi Minh City, everything has 10 different names, and I'm never quite clear what the actual name is. 
We got some pretty big fish down there, a turtle swimming around. But being a modern sort of fellow, I ended up going with the Google Maps name. And uh, what I saw was that it was called Kwan Am Temple. So we're inside the temple, dedicated to the Goddess of Mercy. Very beautiful in here too. As I said, one of the oldest temples, one of the oldest pagodas in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And I think just similar to the other temple that we visited today, this whole area was probably field when it was built. It would have been the only building here other than farmers' houses. And then now, of course, it's got the entire mega city of Ho Chi Minh all, all around it on all sides. Yeah, I wonder if we'll be able to see some uh, old photographs from when it was originally built. There are so many fascinating elements to a temple like this. This is the main entryway here, the main section you enter, the bell right here on the left. And then on the left, there's a another section going around the outside of the main uh, temple building. I love it that they're kind of fearless about colors. A true artist might balk at using a bright primary yellow like this, but I love it. I love bright yellows and reds, things like that. Like, why not use it in a temple? It's supposed to be about spirituality and life, and why not go for the brightest color you can? And then again, I love the, the use of water everywhere. Fish pond and an altar here to the Goddess of Mercy. And then there are so many different ways to pray or to perform a ceremony, arranging from these oil candles, basically, oil lamps. And then, of course, the small incense sticks And I've seen a couple of the really big incense sticks. All the different figures. And uh, Hayden and Jamie were pointing out to me that for this offering, for this tiger, it's actually real uh, bacon, real pork that they put in the tiger's jaws. So all of this is real, like they're real eggs, real fruit. the incense sticks that I mentioned. As far as a way to get people to participate in your religion, it's kind of ingenious when you think about it because there are so many ways for a person to come here and buy something, to spend money, to support the temple, support the priests. Of course, you can, I think you can pay to light one of these oil candles and that since you've paid for it, it's considered your offering. Same thing with these oil lamps here. They each have a name on it. Perhaps the name is the person who paid for it. And of course, leaving offerings of food and fruit. and then lighting incense, part of the uh, ceremony as well. But look at this, so many levels and layers, so much room for more. And there are so many figures, I don't understand them all of course, that you can worship or make offerings to. So everybody can have their own personal figure or deity. So here I believe this is the goddess of mercy and you can make an offering here but then this would be someone else entirely and you could make an offering to this fellow. And there's a ceremony that can be performed here. This is a charity box, I guess.
ringing the bell. And then in these temples, you see a lot of these large towers over here. There's one on either side of this altar. And uh, I believe you can pay to have your name written on one of those little lights. And then that is uh, your form of an offering as well. So I guess what I'm getting at is that this sort of place as a, can serve as the center of a community as well as a place of worship. So people can come here every day to start their day with an offering or a ceremony. They can come here once a week. Um, yeah, just it sort of a, has a very thriving economy built into the way it works. And of course, that economy pays for all of the elaborate decorations as well as the upkeep. And then they have annual festivals. I'm sure they have monthly festivals and ceremonies. It's very different, for example, from a, a Christian church in the West, a different sort of economic life. Yeah, beautiful place. I like this temple a lot. So there are the boys with their bikes, looking very cool, looking very stylish, I must say. So we're heading to our next destination uh, on these beasts. So who am I riding with? Me, me, me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, good to go. Oop. I was always joking that every time I ride on a grab, I think I must look really, really cool riding on my motorcycle in Saigon. But whenever I see the video, I look like a dork. I look really silly. <laughs> but maybe on your motorcycle, maybe I'm finally looking cool. What do you think? Yeah, it is, it is. But <laughs> then we have a problem that you don't have a helmet. Yeah. So it's a big problem here. So if ever, we got caught, if ever, by the police. Right. Just say, you are tourists, we don't know each other. And okay. then, uh, I help you to, to, go, to go to that place. I see, yeah. I got it. Come here. Another beautiful uh, temple behind me there. I think another famous one. Do you want to come here? Or? We don't have to, no. We can uh, go to the alleyway skip and... Skip it. 
two famous temples in a day. It's probably yeah. enough, right? Yeah, I think probably enough. Yeah. Because they're all the same. And they have similarity. Right. I enjoy them. I never get tired of temples, to be honest. I love them all, but yeah, we, don't, we don't have to go to all of them in one day. <laughs> yeah. Need a GoPro mount for your handlebars. Huh? Uh, which one? Oh. Parking? No, we we buy this one. Oh, okay. That's some. So Hayden pulled in here to get something to drink for all three of us. And uh, do you know what it is? Uh, it's like some kind of tea. Tea. We call it sub tea. Sub tea. Sub sub. Yeah. Thank you. So we made a special trip all the way down this alleyway for tea. It's nice and cold too. It's sweet. And it's uh. It's good for your health. And it's good video too. <laughs> to drive through this. This is awesome. Narrow gap. There we go. You're accustomed to having a passenger. You know how to, the, the extra weight doesn't bother you? I saw weight. Like having me on the bike, it doesn't feel awkward to you to drive. You're no, you know no. how to do it? Yeah. I'm used to it. No problem with that. Okay. It's a old coffee shop over there. Yeah, it looks interesting, yeah. Saigon. Aha! Uh -huh. He found it. So here's the uh, uh, the outside, I guess. It's so easy going. These guys can even just park their uh, motorbikes right here without worrying oh, about oh, it. Oh, 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 oh. Is it a 150, your bike? 125. Really? That's all? 125? Yeah, but it's so strong. Yeah. I have the name of this historic alleyway written down in my notes, but I can't think of it right now. Something like Si Yong, Si Fong, Si Fong, I believe. But it's like a century old. Some of the original settlers here lived in places like this. I don't know how many people uh, live here anymore. Yeah, 
that has that uh, village atmosphere, all the chickens and the roosters. Yeah, we've already come to the end of the alleyway. Jamie found a stairway to go up to the second floor. It does make me wonder whether there are disputes between neighbors about the roosters. I mean, roosters are all well and good, but they can be a little bit annoying. It's like a small community. Oh. I saw the picture, there are some people like selling drinks here. Yeah, down at the end and a couple of small, looks like they sell coffee out of their homes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this way. Yeah, it looks very cool from up here. Yeah, it's like a small community, like the one you saw in the movie. Right, exactly. Yeah. So they, uh, intent, uh, they tended to to live in a community like a one gate and then inside the big houses as a lot of houses created a community it's definitely a good idea to come up here to the second floor it really gives you a sense of what an enclosed little community this is. As Jamie was saying, it is yeah, like a, clo a community has a gate on one side, another over there. And then everybody here lives in the same neighborhood basically. And from up here, you get a real sense of uh, what the place looks like. Yeah, I don't know how many there are like this in Ho Chi Minh City. There must be more than one. But uh, this is the one that I heard about here in uh, Cholon. And it's interesting that it's not really uh, commercialized as a tourist attraction. It's just uh, people living here, just living their ordinary lives. Heading back down. Uh, so yeah, as I said, this would be the entrance and maybe everybody who has a scooter can park it out here. And whether they live down here or up on the top floor, yeah, they can just come right in. Other than the roosters, nice and quiet back here, remote from the uh, traffic. So I think we've come to the end of our uh, tour. We're ending it here at, what's the place called on? Sifong? Ha Sifong. Ha Sifong Alleyway. And uh, that was quite interesting. And I was just saying to uh, Jamie and Hayden, I had, a, I had a list going of all the places I wanted to see in Chulan. And uh, super guide Hayden <laughs> brought us pretty much to all of them. So we had an amazing tour of the city. I enjoyed that quite a bit. So yeah, thanks Jamie for inviting me along. And uh, Hayden, nice to meet you again. <laughs> Maybe we can do something like this again sometime. But for now, that's the end of my tour with these two guys. And uh, saying goodbye. See you next time. Yeah. See you. Planet Dirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>